welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do car reviews on YouTube, and I am super excited to be in this brand new 2020 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack, courtesy of Stetler Dodge Jeep Ram in York, PA. And so, I always like to jump in this one. I always have to jump in this one every single year. This is one of my favorites. I'm a huge fan of the Camaro Challenger and Mustang. I actually own a 2019 Ford Mustang GT, so you could probably expect a couple comparisons between the Mustang and the Challenger in this video. But when you jump in this one, of course, this is classic American muscle. And to go along with it, there are plenty of changes for the 2020 model year. So of course, I will be going over all of those for you guys in this video. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so MSRP for the 2020 Challenger Scat Pack will start at $39,995. There is a wide body variant that is going to start at $45,995. But regardless of which setup you go with, power plant will be the same. Powering this beast is a 6.4 liter naturally aspirated V8, putting out 485 horsepower at 6100 RPM. 475 pound-feet of torque available at 4100 rpm power of course sent to the rear wheels through your choice of either a tremec six-speed manual or a torque flight eight-speed automatic with paddle shifters which of course we will be testing out today and by the way that means we do have the eight-speed torque flight automatic although i have driven both in the challenger both are just fine six-speed manual is just as fun but all in all zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 4.3 seconds for the wide body that reduces that to 4.2 seconds 3.8 seconds if you go with the 1320 package and i'll get a little bit more into that as we go in the video but that actually adds three thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars but a zero to sixty and three point eight that is definitely pretty sweet by the way for comparison's sake my mustang gt with the performance pack level one does it in 3.9 so that's pretty cool. Quarter mile comes in at approximately 12.7 seconds, 12.5 seconds for the wide body, and 11.7 seconds for the 1320 package. And by the way, for comparison's sake, Mustang GT with performance pack will do that in 11.9. Top speed, 182 miles per hour. That is very impressive, actually. With MPG numbers coming at 15 in the city, 24 in the highway for the automatic, 14 city, 23 highway for the manual. And in case you were curious, premium unleaded fuel is recommended, of course. But so that before we do any kind of accelerations in the Challenger, I did want to mention there are some drive modes, and those drive modes, by the way, can be accessed through the infotainment screen front and center there. But it's essentially going to give you modes like automatic, custom, sport, and track. And what those driving modes are actually going to do is adjust things like the throttle response, shift points, steering sensitivity, and traction control. For instance, if you put it in that sport mode, traction control comes off so you can do maybe some drifting or some burnouts or whatever but now that I have gotten all of that out of the way what do you say let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters and by the way to put it in full manual shift mode with the automatic at least of course is what you want to do is slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left and that does give me full control and by the way these paddle shifters they're very high quality they feel magnesium and I could be wrong there but I've tested plenty of paddle shifters I know the Mustangs are plastic of course but these feel a lot more high quality than when I got in my Mustang I will say that so that's definitely nice but nonetheless let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and find a straightaway here and let's test out the paddle shifters of this 2020 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. All right here we go you guys. All right not bad actually pretty quick reacting paddle shifters not the quickest I've ever tested but I've tested a lot of sports cars but they're not bad. They're certainly not. I definitely would say they are comparable to the Mustangs paddle shifter. So they're right around the same reaction times there. Um, I did take it a little bit easy on that acceleration with the paddle shifters there because the roads are still wet. It is uh, 9 a.m. this morning. So don't want to slide into a ditch or anything. But having said that, let's now do a quick little acceleration. Give it a little more gas than the paddle shifter test there. And let's go ahead and see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Challenger Scat Pack here up to speed. All right, you guys. And... Here we go. Oh boy, spinning. Let's go. <laughs> Dang, this car is fun. I love American Muscle every single time. That was freaking fun. Even though I slipped at first gear, pretty much as expected. I literally just drove through a puddle before I did that, but dang, this is a very enjoyable car. Definitely a car that is gonna put a smile on your face without a doubt when you hit the gas, so that was, that was pretty darn enjoyable. But 
As always, to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 15.4 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.8 inch solid rear discs. And I did want to mention, there are six piston front calipers with the Dynamics package. That goes for $2,200, by the way. But we actually do have that package today. And as far as the braking feel goes, let's go ahead and hit the brakes here. It's brilliant. <laughs> Certainly no issues with bringing the Challenger to a stop. So very, very nice bite on the brake. So love that. What's it anyways, then touching on suspension and handling a little bit. Up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, an independent multi-link rear suspension. And I did want to mention there is an adaptive damping system. And so that is going to be standard with the wide body scat pack, but it's actually optional with the standard scat pack that we have here today. And by the way, that's a $995 option if you wanted to put it on the standard scat pack at least. And really, that is something that I would definitely recommend. It's also an option for the Mustang. It's one that I did not go with, but it is probably the one thing that I wish I would have gotten because that is essentially gonna give you the best of both worlds. It is gonna soak up the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but at the same time, it's also gonna tighten up the suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling, of course, as well. So again, best of both worlds for $995. I would definitely recommend that. But speaking of ride quality, Quality. The ride quality has been great so far today. Certainly less punishing than my Mustang, but then again, I've lowered my Mustang with 20 inch wheels. So I kind of was asking for it there, I guess you could say, but, but yeah, nonetheless, ride quality is absolutely brilliant, at least for a sports car. So no issues there. Steering feel has been actually great so far as well. And we'll say the steering feel does get adjusted, as I mentioned earlier, dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So in that sport mode that I literally just put it in, the steering feel is great. So absolutely no issues there. Definitely a fan. Touching on cabin noise a little bit, perhaps the only cabin noise I'm really getting is some of these tiny little gravel things going up in the wheel well. But other than that, the exhaust note is very nice, actually. For a stock exhaust system, it definitely has a nice exhaust note coming into the cabin. And I will do an exhaust clip later in the video, so stick around. But still, definitely actually enjoying the cabin noise if there is such a thing. But anyway, is then touching on visibility. I can see perfectly fine out the back. Really, the only muscle car that you're going to have any kind of issues with when it comes to visibility is the Camaro. And that's kind of like a, I guess, a pony car anyways. But nonetheless, visibility is great in the Challenger, so no issues there for me. And I did want to mention there is a technology package, I guess, for around $1,300. That is going to also add rain-sensing windshield wipers, meaning whenever the Challenger detects even a slight drizzle, it's going to automatically put on those windshield wipers, and that's always nice. It's kind of like automatic headlights. One less thing you have to worry about so you get better focus on actually enjoying the drive in the Challenger, so that's kind of a cool thing too. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior because there are plenty of changes there that we'll be going over them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this new 2020 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. All right, you guys, and here she is, the 2020 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack finished in octane red, in case you were curious. And by the way, why don't we go ahead and start with the colors. There are no new colors for the 2020 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. However, some colors have been deleted, including Sublime Exterior, Plum Crazy, B5 Blue, Destroyer Gray, and Maximum Steel. So previous colors that were available in 2019 those are no longer available for 2020. But do you want to first touch on, let's touch on the shaker package because we do have that as an option here today. By the way, that goes for $2,595. That includes the shaker hood that of course you were looking at right now. And that comes with a shaker intake by Mopar of course as well. And of course you have some shaker badging throughout this one. There is also a shaker under hood decal as well and a white face instrument cluster, which I thought was so retro and so freaking cool looking on the inside. And that of course is what you're looking at right now. And I'll get more into the gauges later, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Challenger and RT badging found within that front grille. Projector headlights will come standard with daytime running lights, of course, and the automatic feature for those headlights, meaning when it starts to get dark out, it will turn on automatically for you there. HID headlights are available with the driver confidence group that goes for $1,295 and that is actually what you are looking at right now and that actually includes blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert as well and just below it all you will find fog lights for any setup that you go with as well they do come standard but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one of course first thing I always have to mention is that B logo that scat pack B logo found on the front fender there 
Also black window surrounds will come standard wide fender arches if you go with the wide body, of course. That is definitely not what you're looking at right now. When it comes to those side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors and they will actually come heated as well. They take a look down at the wheel setup. 20 by nine inch double five spoke alloys will come standard with high performance all season tires. So yes, you can even drive it in cold weather here in Pennsylvania, it's definitely a plus. 20 by 9.5 inch double five spoke alloys will come with the dynamics package that of course is what you're looking at right now. And again, they come with high performance all season tires. And if you were to go with the wide body setup, that bumps the width up to 20 by 11 inch double five spoke alloy. So definitely good to fill in those wheel arches, of course. But let's go ahead and make our way to the back. Shark fin antenna finished in a matte black up top there. When it comes to this rear spoiler, the standard setup is going to be different, of course, than what you were currently looking at right now. There is a satin black rear spoiler with the B logo on the spoiler. That, by the way, is new for 2020. One of the changes for this year. However, you are looking at the SRT performance spoiler right now that goes for $695. I love the look of it, honestly. It looks looks very similar to the one I have on my Mustang right now, actually, so it looks good. LED taillights will come standard, of course, and just below it all, perhaps what everybody has been waiting for, dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So I do believe you guys know what is coming next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> So, but now since we all round back, when it comes to opening that rear trunk there, there is actually a button on the key fob. Simply press that twice. That is one way you're gonna go ahead and open that rear trunk. It's also a button by the driver's side left knee. That is the second way. And lastly, there is a button just above the license plate back there rubberized button that is the third way you can go about opening that rear trunk but once opened up there is some cargo lighting back there i did want to mention that but cargo capacity is going to come in at 16.2 cubic feet if that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it Make your own way up to the legroom. This is definitely one of the things the Challenger has over the Camaro and Mustang. Rear legroom comes in at 33.1 inches. Mustang comes in at 29 inches flat, Camaro 29.1 inches. So quite a difference here with the Challenger. For reference, I mean even six feet tall, still a bit cramped, I gotta be honest, but this is a two door, but you probably could find a way to make it work with an adult net rear seat, to be quite honest. Reference again, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Did wanna also mention though, it gets even better. There's a rear center armor with cup holders for those rear passengers. That is brilliant. You don't get that with the Mustang. I can't tell you that. And in addition to that, rear ventilation as well. Another thing that you don't get with the Mustang, but you do with the Challenger. I love that. Well done, Dodge, for all of that. But making your way up to the front seats, power adjustable cloth seating with the B logo will come standard. However, with the plus package, I guess for $1,895, you actually do get a leather Alcantara seating setup. And that, of course, is actually what you're looking at right now. But either way, front seats will be heated and that does come standard so that's definitely a plus as well now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped coming standard and if you go with the dynamics package it does come with a flat bottom as well and this particular steering wheel today actually is power adjustable it's something that surprised me when i first got in here it is not manually adjustable it is power adjustable like the lexuses or audis that i review so i thought that was a kind of cool little luxury feature there but nonetheless it will come heated actually as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your dodge logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and that circular button with the times two that is actually your remote start so that is freaking sweet too warming up the challenger on cool days in pa not so much like today it's kind of nice out today actually but that's always a plus but to start this one all i'm going to do actually is just simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button coming standard, by the way, located just by the driver's right knee there. It's open that once started up, as I had previously mentioned, because of the shaker package that we have today, the gauges are finished with a white face. 
tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a pretty large digital display as well, front and center. To control what is on that digital display, simply use the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side there. It's gonna give you a ton of different things like a digital speedometer. You could check out your tire pressure information, engine temp, oil temp, all that fun stuff. But perhaps my favorite part, about the gauge display on the Challenger is the performance pages. So you're gonna have things like a zero to 60 timer, a zero to 100 timer, quarter mile timer, braking distance, G4 statistics, also a lap timer, but perhaps the best part that the Mustang does not come with with its performance pages is your top speed history. So it will show the very fastest that this car has ever been. I absolutely love that. Ford, if you're watching this video somehow, Put it in the Mustang because that is awesome. I absolutely love that. But of course, you got a ton of other things you can check out. Fuel economy, trip information as expected, radio information, when you need your next oil change and the list goes on. So I'll probably just leave it on the digital speedometer. I like that. But when it comes to overall interior quality, power sunroof, we do have that today. That is an option for $1,295. Yet another feature you can't get on the Mustang. If you wanted ambient lighting, you can actually get that with the plus package. Again, that goes for $1,895. But since I keep mentioning it, that plus package does also add a premium stitch dash and door panels and some Alcantara seating, of course, as well. And as I was mentioning earlier, the uh, the shaker accents, you can find some shaker lettering found around the passenger side air vent to the right there, just above the glove box. So that's pretty cool that they put it on the inside and not only just on the outside, but universal garage door openers will actually come standard on the Challenger Scat Pack. Love that too. And that could be found kind of on the ceiling of the Scat Pack here for up to three different garage doors. Dual zone climate control does also come standard. One of the cool things I like about the uh, Challenger Scat Pack too, since I'm going super in depth with this one, as I always do, when you open up the glove box, you do have your normal glove box area, but you also do have a tray area area just on top. It looks like honestly they set it up in two compartments. The right side you can put maybe your Glock and the left side you can put the bullets. So when you go to the shooting range that is where you're going to be able to store that. So that's pretty cool. Also another thing I found interesting is the uh, lever to open the doors. Usually they're found a little higher up in other manufacturers. They're pretty darn low here in the Challenger. It's not a bad thing. It's a different thing. I kind of like different but it's just something to get used to I guess. Did want to also mention there's a little storage area just to the right of the shifter. You got dual cup holders just behind that and when you open up the center armrest you have a 12 volt power outlet two usb charging ports and an auxiliary port as well so overall interior quality is not that bad i wouldn't mind some contrast colors in here maybe instead of just the, the all black setup it's still a very nice interior quality especially for a muscle car but now let's go ahead and take a look at the tech display on this one 8.4 inch color touchscreen display will come standard that will of course come with bluetooth and audio streaming android auto and apple carplay also coming standard that's always a big selling point for me because that means you can hook up your smartphone to the challenger and therefore you have free navigation displayed as well as the ability to like and dislike your pandora songs there's a couple other compatible apps as well if you did want a factory navigation system although you don't need it these days you can get it for an additional 795 dollars there climate control information can be displayed up there as well and of course all your performance settings so if you wanted to change the drive modes as i was saying previously you can do that through that infotainment screen as well as activating line lock you can warm up the tires before you actually get to the line and of course you got launch control and you can adjust that as well for any drag racing that you plan on doing. So that's pretty cool too. But of course you can check out your radio settings as pretty much as expected. But by the way, when it comes to this sound system, you will get six speakers and 276 watts. That is the standard setup. However, there is a nine speaker, 506 watt Alpine sound system that is optional for $995. That is the one we have today. And you guys know what we have to do next then. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Oh my gosh, you guys, that was a chill step EDM version of Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. I've never heard that before. That was awesome. I mean, of course, the classic is good too, but that was pretty cool. I actually didn't mind that, but nonetheless, bass is really, really nice. Clarity is just fine. Really no issues whatsoever with that Alpine sound system, but 
Last thing on that tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Challenger Scat Pack in reverse, of course, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, you do have front side and side curtain airbags. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children if you wanted to put a rear car seat back there. Tire pressure monitoring system will also come standard. Hill start assist, also standard. That's probably a big one if you go with the six speed manual. Driver confidence group, I wanted to mention that. That goes for $1,295. That's gonna give you a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and those HID headlights I mentioned earlier. Then there's the technology group, same price, $1,295. That gives you automatic high beams, rain sensing, windshield wipers, adaptive cruise control, and forward collision warning. And so that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video.